Welcome back to Masonry Studio. I'm David Abrams, founder and CEO of Masonry. I'm living in Hollywood, Florida for a little over four years now, and I have a flight book back to New York every single week. There are absolutely nuances between the two cities. So today I wanna to talk through a few of those. In New York City, foot traffic is so important. A retailer wants to know what's the proximity to the subway, ease of access to public transportation. Whereas in Miami, it's all about vehicular traffic. And how do I park? Is it a garage? Is it surface parking? For the permit process in New York, it's really important to have an expediter. They'll handle everything with the DOB getting the permit. Once you actually go to build, an architect can self-certify. That really speeds up the process. In Miami, it, it's pro-business. It takes time. And we really try to educate the tenants coming from outer cities, four to six months to pull a permit is pretty standard here. A grease trap in New York could cost $800. In Miami, it's a very different process and it's a very different cost. It can get up to $80,000. This came up in a conversation recently when I interviewed Arnon Magal. Outdoor seating in Miami is a standard. That's not to say that every tenant requires it, but most of them ask for it. Not the same in New York. It goes without saying, there are several more months to enjoy the outdoor space in Miami than in New York. Impact fees. Say that to a broker in New York and see how many actually understand what you're talking about. It's non-existent. I should say I've never done a deal in New York with an impact fee, whereas it comes up very often in Miami. Most retail deals done in New York City are on a modified gross basis, whereas in Miami, it's typically triple net. In another video, we'll go through the differences of the two. Weather aside, what's something you find different between the two cities? Let us know in the comments below. I'm David Abrams, founder and CEO of Masonry.